Hello and welcome to the All Things Horror Podcast with me, Amazon best-selling horror author and horror fanatic, Rick Wood, where me and my guests discuss all things horror. Coming up on today's show. Um, she had been the victim of satanic ritual abuse. Oh wow. Uh, she was clearly very poorly, she didn't just have a few multiple personalities, she had hundreds. She actually had to crosses um, burned on the soles of her feet. What came out was an alter ego which was purely demonic. It's because they believe that you harness that power and you raise the Dark Lord if you like. Hello there and welcome to the Rickwoods All Things Horror podcast and happy December to you. Um, we're up on the month where we're going to be decking our halls and donning our gay apparel. Um, as you might or might not be able to hear from my voice, as it is winter, of course, I am not well, and I have quite a bit of cold, but this has given me the opportunity to start on my Christmas horror movies, uh, I've been trying to seek out one that I haven't seen yet, and I found one called Silent Night, about a Santa that goes around uh, murdering people who've been naughty. Um, I mean, the movie itself was absolutely terrible, but in that way that I love terrible horror movies... Um, and, and the deaths were very creative, put it that way. Um, I've still got to go Black Christmas, uh, Krampus, um, and tell about Black Christmas as well, not just the 2006 remake, the original that was much better, the 1970s, 1980s version, much, much better. So anyway, today I have an interview that I did with Sarah England for you. Absolutely fascinating interview, hearing about how she, she based some of her stories on work she did as a mental health nurse, and I can't wait for you to hear all of it. So here it is, part one of that interview, part two will be out in two weeks. Here it is, part one, my interview with Sarah England. Right, hello there, I am here in... Cheshire, is that where I am? Yes. Yes, with uh, Sarah England. Hello, Sarah. Hi. How are you today? I'm all right. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> Good. Oh, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Um, so first, tell us a bit about uh, Sarah England, the author, and your books, and, and what they're about. All right. Well, I write um, occult horror, mostly. I've been doing it for about four years. Um, prior to that, well, I started off as a nurse, and then I went into psychiatry as a medical rep. For, for many, many years, about 20 years, um, uh, specialising in schizophrenia and also depression. Um, then I got the chance to, um, to to move house and I'd always wanted to be a writer. That's what I would have chosen to have been, uh, to have been involved in literature. And so I basically taught my, myself. I started working for magazines, doing short stories and things like that. Got my first publication. And um, and then I met somebody who um, had what's what was known as multiple personality disorder. Mm. It's now DID, and she kind of shook my world. And I suddenly thought, I'm just writing short stories here. Just they're, they're sort of fairly shallow. And it it sort of suddenly everything came together. My mental health background, my fascination with the supernatural and the occult and the the need to tell this lady's story so father of lies was born was it was it based on her um ruby was kind of heavily inspired by her what, but everything else changed what was it about this person and that, that inspired that that made you want to do that um she had been the victim of satanic ritual abuse oh wow and when i was talking to her um she uh, she was clearly very poorly. She didn't just have a few multiple personalities. She had hundreds. And I actually saw her switch in front of me. And it was the most distressing, uh, um, saddening, uncomfortable thing and quite frightening thing that I've ever seen. And um, uh, when she started to tell me what had happened to her and how she'd coped with life afterwards, I began to research it and look at... Um, Apparently 90% of those cases of DID are attributable to child abuse. So I began to look into it and I also researched um, um, demonic possession, I researched um, hypnotism in psychiatry and all those kind of things and suddenly I felt there's, there's a story to tell here, let's change where it is, let's change the story and let's sort of put it onto the, the medical staff to see 
if they can help her and if they will ever come up with the real reason. Wow, that's fascinating. Because I was led to believe there's only like ten actual cases of multiple personality in the world. Am I, am I misinformed by thinking that? Well, no, I think possibly yes. Yes. Um, it, as it's, it is quite well documented, 90% are attributable to child abuse. And hers was mm. ritual satanic abuse and she actually had crosses uh, burned on the soles of her feet etc crosses on the soles of her feet wow so she these people the frightening thing is these people believed in it and the 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 ring um of of these men was uncovered but of course it's very very difficult to prove it and she's left with lifelong affliction you know with a lifelong problem how did you turn that into a story then um, well, I, I really went back to the roots of it. I, I started off with, what if you're presented, if you're the psychiatrist and you're presented with a girl who is terribly um, disturbed? She's, she's violent, she's angry, she's, she has multiple personalities, she doesn't know who she is. What if you're presented with that and we'll work backwards? So basically they're not getting any joy with her she's not getting any better so they decide to hypnotize her and for this i i this is the last resort it is used it's used with lsd but as a last resort and it was certainly right. used more in the past so i researched that use a tiny tiny dose it can unlock what's what's gone on and what's happened to that person so they did it with her but of course because she'd been satanically ritually abused what came out was an alter ego which was purely demonic and it affected all the staff so that each member of the staff in turn from the psychiatrist to the to the lead nurse all became really badly affected and one or two of them went back to the village that she came from to try and dig out what happened and that's how i built the story wow that's fascinating uh, i've got so <laughs> many questions off that um so when when you wrote the book hmm. Um, sorry to say, I haven't, haven't read it yet. Um, when you wrote the book, did you make it so that the satanic witch was, was kind of real, that it was real supernatural, or did you very much make it about, no, it's a psycho psychological problem, um, if you get what I mean? Yes. Um, I, I made it that it was a psychiatric um, issue, yeah. that she'd, um, she was abused, violently abused uh, sexually and, um, and emotionally. But because of what the nature of what they were doing, they were doing black mass. Um, you know, they they were worshiping mm -hmm. the the devil. Um, because of that, one of the, what what people can do is take on the persona of their abuser. Okay. So it was partly that they were raising this force that they were raising. They believed that they were raising this evil force, and that had, that is what possessed. Shit, why would someone want to yeah. raise an evil force, even if you didn't believe in it? Why would someone want to do that? Well, they believe in it, and they believe that it will um, enhance their power, if you like. So these are mostly a group of men, uh, some women as well, of course. But yeah. um, it's because they believe that you harness that power, you raise the Dark Lord, if you like, and um, it will enhance their power. So they become more rich, more successful, and of course many of them are deviants as well, and it gives them a great excuse to be uh, paedophiles and, oh, and right. rapists and abusers. Wow. Um, it happens. It happens. This was happening in the UK? That happened in the UK, and it happens. It happens. Does, does this uh, person know that the story is based on her? Yes, but she doesn't want to be named. Yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's very, she's a very vulnerable person. She's also also um, incredibly clairvoyant. I mean, spookily, uncannily mm. clairvoyant. And because she feels she's not in control of that as well, she is frightened of it. In, in what way? What what kind of happened? In terms well, because of in someone with um, DID, it's it's. Um, what does DID stand for? Um, dis, 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 Dissociative <laughs> Identity Disassociative Disorder. Dissociative oh, right, okay. Identity Disorder. So it basically means that someone, some alter ego, is mm. in the driving seat. Yeah. Which means that sh whoever the real ego is, isn't there. Okay. So if, you, if you're talking about having spiritual, um, I know some people don't believe in this, but it, if you're talking about being possessed or having a spirit talking through you, then you need to be in control of that, not, yeah. not in control. So when you said that she was quite clairvoyant, what, what did she do? Um, well, she just knew things. She knew things about me, for example, from my childhood. 
she um, she told me the name of my childhood babysitter. Oh, right. And said she's standing with you. And she gave me the name, and the name was an unusual one. So very... Uh, and she, she knew a lot about the intricacies of my family life, which wasn't quite, wasn't altogether straightforward, yeah. uh, without anyone telling her. So, yeah, she's very, very clairvoyant. Um, so she won't, she doesn't want to be named. She doesn't want to be sort well, of, of outed, of course did not. She, did she read the book? Yes. What did she think? She was, well, there were three. There's Father of Lies, then Tannersdale, then Magda, mm. and they, they all um, deal with the, this girl's journey. And I believe that she wrote a, a few reviews thanking me for dealing with it sensitively. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So it's a, it's largely about, and a lot of other people have said as well. Uh, if you, there's reviews for the first one in particular and the second one saying, "Thank you for dealing with it sensitively." This is the kind mm. of thing that happened to me. I, I, they, you would think they wouldn't want to read things that it would trigger yeah. them because Just... triggers are very, very volatile things. You wouldn't think that they'd want to read things that might trigger them, mm. but they did, and they actually some one of them and even discussed it with a therapist. So they yeah. they had actually it had actually helped them. They were glad it came out. Wow, that's really interesting. <laughs> I know because I mean it's nowhere near as extreme. Oh, bipolar disorder, and I hate reading stuff about it because yeah, I find it to be so inaccurate. Mm. I just think of the the TV show Homeland. And they present her as, oh, she's off her meds. She must be absolutely crazy now. I'm like, oh. It's annoying, isn't not. it? I've, it's see, just, I've seen yeah. Split and things like that. And I just think, yeah. it, it's, that's not right. And the therapist wouldn't do that. Yeah. And it's so annoying, isn't it? And that whole, it's just the kind of thing, the satanic cult, they think happens in horror movies and not, not in real life. But I had that's, it from the real person. And it yeah. really, really happened to her. And also, I was very careful with the research. The research yeah. that I did was... A, medical, and B, from um, a point of view of a priest who dealt with other priests who did exorcism. So a lot of it is what people believe, if they believe in the Catholic rhetoric or not. But I got it from, yeah. from direct So accounts. I guess it, you're kind of treating a half psych psychiatric, half... Half and half, yes. And that must have been interesting to do. Yes, it is. I mean, I do, I always, always found psychiatry very interesting. Yeah. Always find it absolutely fascinating. So, um, I, w I was drawn to that, yeah. What, was there an actual exorcism performed or, or no. was it? No. Okay. Yes, you wouldn't find a psychiatrist doing that, you know, but, it's going to be the church. But wouldn't the clairvoyance kind of come out of, if there was an evil force put in her, perhaps mm. come out of that? And certainly that, I put that in, in Father of Lies, where she tells the nurse yeah. things that she couldn't possibly have known. And they, they are all atheists. They all have explanations for everything. But yeah. in the end, they're faced with things that they, that they just can't explain. Wow. Well, that was a hell of an opening <laughs> 10 minutes of the podcast. Oh, that's bent to some <laughs> idle chat about books. That's really interesting. Um, wow. So, so uh, I guess, guess go on to your horror profile. So your your horror questions. Yes. Your first one, your favourite horror movie. Um, my favourite, I've, I've probably got two or three, but I think The Exorcism of Emily Rose is the one that freaks oh, me yes, out the most. Yes. Mm. Why that one? Um, why that one? I think, you know, again, what we've just been talking about, ath the atheists, the, the, the lawyers and the people mm. and the doctors and the people who will not consider that there is anything else that could explain it mm. um and the fact that this 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 happened this happened to this girl and there was no other way of explaining it and the priest w wasn't even taken seriously you know um but nevertheless she was in such a, a terrible mess she was she, yeah. she nobody could explain why but the, the bit that really freaked me out and the bit that i feel um makes it number one horror movie for me is where she goes to the dormitory and she's on her own have you seen it yes oh, i've seen it many times yeah and she's on her own and the door slams and she goes out to see if anyone was there and no one's there and it was mm. the fire door slamming and then she gets back into her bed and things have moved around in the room yeah and i i just think oh god if that was me i would absolutely i'd be running out of there screaming it just seemed to hit home I don't know. I, I, the freakiest bit for me is where she sat in class and she turns around and that boy's face is normal. So he turns back and oh, it's yes. there. That made me jump out of my skin. Did it? Um, and of course, it's based on a real story, isn't it? Yeah. 
He's playing um, that girl in uh, Germany, isn't he? Is it? I don't know if it's because at, at the end, the priest, they found him guilty of neglect, but yeah. gave him time served. Yes. Which is fascinating to think yeah. that, so yes, you didn't neglect him, but we think you suffered enough. Because mm. they didn't really believe him, but mm. he obviously had suffered and had tried to help obviously him. Obviously had the best of intentions, didn't he? It's kind of a yeah. point of view as to what you believe as to whether those... And they asked him to help, to, yeah. to help her. Yeah. And I, I, but I think the actress herself, you know, I think yeah. the actress herself was frightening. You've got to have a good actress to play, play in. I mean, she really was quite frightening, wasn't she? Yeah. You know, when the boyfriend tried to help her and then she was on, he looked over at the floor and she was twisted on the floor yes. and her neck yes. was back and I thought, oh! Yes. <gasps> My favourite would probably be The Last Exorcism thing. That, that's another actress as well that's... Oh, I've not seen that. You've not seen The Last Exorcism? No. Oh, you've got to watch that one. Oh, right. Oh, so God. good. Yes, no, I'll get that. Um, your favourite horror book? Favourite horror book? I really do like The Shrine by James Herbert. Okay. It would either be that or Susan Hill's The Woman in Black. Okay. Mm. Are you a fan of the stage play as well? Uh, no, not really. No. Um, I dread to think if you're, if you're a fan of the film then. Terrible. It's awful. Absolutely Shocking. awful, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely awful mm. and not even frightening. Not, no. not for one moment, but no. the book is pretty spooky. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the end is really quite, um, it's really packs a punch. What about the the shrine by James Herbert? Mm. Then I'm I'm not don't know it. What's it about? Um, it's about a girl who, in a sort of fairly small town, who sees what she says is the image of the Virgin Mary mm. uh, next to a church in a in an adjoining field, and it becomes a shrine. And of course, it's all uh, quite a lot of it's psychological, mm. but the very atheist, very sort of laid back journalist or local hack looking into it um, is the protagonist and um, whilst he's researching various papers on the church he goes to a, a really really old church on the on the in the grounds of an mm. estate of an old house and there's a scene in there where in this ancient church the storm whips up outside of course he's in an ancient church and he's going towards um the chest at the back of the church to look for these papers and they're all those old enclosed pew church pews that you can't see in mm. those boxed pews and he has a feeling that there's somebody there and this is an ancient locked tiny church on an estate and he has a feeling somebody's there, and the, the way he the way he describes it is truly chilling. It's suddenly it's it's like somebody wanting to get into the church, and the doors rattling away, really really jiggling away on the hook as if someone's desperate to get in, but there's nobody there. Yeah. And he gets level with the front pew, and of course he looks into the box pew, and there is a pretty pretty horrific apparition. So uh, that to me was an absolutely chilling scene on, on a par with yeah. mr james you know it really is very very chilling well, i'm gonna have to read it. i've never read james herbert but quite a few few people in interviewed have said james oh, yeah. herbert yeah does that lead us to your favorite horror creator then um <laughs> i don't really have a favorite horror creator to be honest do you have favorites anyone that you can kind of think of you mean writers because i'm a, not a writer director actor actress so, someone associated with horror I mean, uh, is it John? It's John Carpenter, isn't it? Yeah. The, the, yes. I mean, I think he's very. He did the Fog, didn't he? Yes. And various other things. I mean, I think he's a very, uh, very good d director. But um, does all his own music as well, doesn't he? Yeah. John Carpenter. Yeah. But not really. No. I mean, no, not at the moment. Fair enough. Um, why? Why horror? So you've chosen to write in horror. Could have written romance or <laughs> espionage. Why horror? I'm just drawn to it. And I don't really know why. I always have been. What is it you're drawn to? The unknown. Fear of the unknown. Mm. Um, the quest for knowing. The mystery. Yeah. Um, the excitement, the magic, the occult. Um, as I've moved further and further into it, going down the route of sort of black magic and witchcraft and finding more and more and more about it, mm. I actually find it more fascinating. It's just endless. But it did start as a child. Um, we moved into a very old house in Sheffield yeah. and um, I was about seven years old. And every night in that house, I was really, really frightened, really frightened. Yeah. And I'd lie in bed and be convinced that the wardrobe door was going to open. And one night it it did 
and my dad ran upstairs my mother didn't but my dad ran upstairs and said that's you've got to stop it there's nothing there there's nothing there yeah well i only found out after we'd moved that there, were, there had been a murder there what were they was the wardrobe anything to do with the murder no, i don't think so but okay. you know if you believe what i believe then maybe there's something a so residue it's kind of perhaps a <laughs> residual a, presence a childhood thing of of the unknown then Possibly, yes. But um, I always had that thing of making little stories up in my head and things would frighten me quite easily. I would would you frightened. say you're, you're scared easily by horror films and books or, or did it take a lot? Be. Yeah, I used to be. And I've had sort of various experiences over the years that have been heart-stoppingly frightening where I thought, my God, there, re- there really is something, you know. Mm. Um, so I'm drawn to it. Coming up in part two out in two weeks time i'd lie in bed and hear what sounded like clomping work boots upstairs i woke up one night to find um what can only be described as an apparition and she's she's absolutely without doubt she sent me photographs of things things that just just blow my mind Mm. killed her she she hacked her to death on the steps put her body in the boot and left her in the body it left the body in the boot up there for weeks until the snow thawed 